This is the launch of the Heads Up podcast. And did you know it is also the fifth annual World Brain Day? And this year it is dedicated to raising awareness for the most common brain disease in the world, migraine. Welcome to the Heads Up Podcast, brought to you by the National Migraine Centre, the only UK charity treating migraine and headache. Oh, hi. Welcome to our Heads Up uh, Podcast. I'm Dr. Katie Monroe from National Migraine Centre, and today I'm talking with my colleague, Dr. Jessica Briscoe. We're going to be talking about what is a migraine and the four stages of migraine. Absolutely. So um, what is a migraine? Essentially, without going into too much detail, we know it's a genetic condition. That means that it runs in families. So if you know someone in your family that's got migraine, you are very, very likely to suffer with it too. Yeah, that's a double whammy. If both your parents have it, that risk is much higher. Absolutely. Also, uh, some people don't know uh, who in their family had migraine. And that's because in the past, it wasn't always diagnosed or labelled. And some people who have migraine... Uh, actually didn't get it very often so does just because you haven't got a family history doesn't mean that it's not a genetic condition we know there are 42 genes at least involved in changing your brain so that it is a little bit more sus- uh, a little bit more likely to get a migraine yeah um and sort of what actually happens the actual process we don't fully understand we know that there's something that go gets triggered off in your midbrain which starts all of your nerves around your head misfiring i think is the best way to say it, it makes them a bit more sensitive mm-hmm. and then that starts the whole process which probably brings us nicely into our four stages of migraine. Yeah, so the first one we always uh, talk about, which people aren't always aware of, uh, and can last for anything from one to two days before you actually get what most people think of as a migraine, which is the headache, and that's the prodromal phase. So this is a time when patients often describe to us that they get either a lot of fatigue or they get really quite irritable. Mm. Sometimes they get yawning. Have you come across that one, Jess? Yeah, yawning's a really common one. And I think the other thing I see is mood changes. So people getting, people say that it's not them that notices so much, it's their loved ones. They'll say, oh yeah, they get really low or depressed and I can tell that they're about to get it. Just uh, Yeah, just occasionally get a burst of energy, don't they? And sometimes people get a craving um, and that's, can be for certain foods and that's where chocolate sometimes got a bad name Mm. because people get a craving for chocolate and it was a sign of them getting a migraine rather than actually uh, being the cause of it so the prodromal phase lots of symptoms can happen then it's worth knowing about it because you might be able to work out that a migraine is coming and nip it in the bud yeah I I mean you're totally right about the cravings because I think that's also why people think that certain smells or certain lights can be the trigger of their migraine when the whole process has actually started 12 to 24 hours beforehand it's often the thing that sort of tips them over the edge but I think it's really important to be aware of them so that they can can get these the, the treatment on board quickly. Yeah, going back to what we were saying about what is a migraine, the genes that are, are in your body when you are a migraine sufferer mean that your brain is always a little bit more sensitive to things, whether or not you've got a, a migraine attack. So light, sound, movement, touch, all of those things can be a little bit um, of a, a potential trigger or you can be more irritated by them. Um, and so watch out for those kind of things too so shall we talk about aura yeah i think aura is the next bit which doesn't occur in everybody so it's really important because a lot of people think that a lot of people will be quite apologetic to me actually and say oh i'm sorry i don't get an aura does that mean i've not got a migraine it's actually far less common to have an aura so what is aura well aura is um usually a visual change that people notice but it can be other things as well so the visual changes could be that suddenly somebody can't see the center of their vision will go or people describe that they get flashing lights or maybe a small dot uh, expanding to the outer edges of their vision and zigzags zigzags are often something they describe aren't they yeah and um sometimes i've actually had children describe sparkles to me yeah um and things like that so it it can actually take 
any form yeah. but it's about when it actually occurs in the attack so just before the pain phase and it, it doesn't have to be visual so there are other aura symptoms so commonly um, room spinning dizziness or vertigo um, the speech disturbances so not getting the right words out can be one of them numbness or tingling in the face and the hands or legs sometimes then... a feeling of heaviness just mm. a sort of heavy feeling of down the side of the body yeah and that's the sort of horrible hemiplegic migraine that's sort of where you can't move one side of the body as well and aura traditionally is described as coming and going within 60 minutes before the headache starts so that aura phase is usually uh, a, a fairly short phase and as Jess was saying only about 25 percent of people get that and you might have aura sometimes and not other times so that's migraine with and without aura uh, and that can occur throughout people's lives from time to time the next phase is the pain phase um, and I think that's the thing that everyone traditionally thinks of with a migraine mm. that's pain um, and this isn't always the most troubling bit, but it can be pretty horrible for people. Yeah. Um, and it's not just pain, actually. Um, people can also feel incredibly sick or nauseous. Um, they can have that sort of, they can start having some of the concentration difficulties as well. Um, and actually, this is the point where you really need to have got painkillers on board nice and quickly. Yes, I sort of talk about uh, migraine being a snowball, uh, so snowball kind of rolling and gathering momentum and getting bigger and bigger. And if you if you want to get rid of a snowball before it knocks you down, you need to jump on it very quickly. So the same with a migraine, really. The quicker you can get in there with medication, the better. So the headache phase um, is very important, but sometimes people get quite a lot of tummy symptoms as well, especially children. Um, we'll do another episode about uh, migraine in children, but just to say watch out for tummy pains uh, in children. And the vomiting and nausea is often a common thing, and that's caused by the stomach not emptying properly. So a thing that we call gastric stasis occurs, uh, which also reduces the absorption of the painkillers. So that uh, headache phase is really quite important to get the medication right. And then the last bit, which a lot of people find incredibly troubling, is the post-ictal phase, so that, that bit at the end of the migraine. And this is where people can be experiencing what is commonly described as a brain fog, where I always think of it a bit like wading through treacle with your thoughts. Mm, so everything hard just, work to think. Yeah, yeah, everything slows down. You don't concentrate as well. Everything just takes longer and is more difficult. And that can last for up to five days, actually. Uh, days. Yeah, sometimes people describe it as, you know, the pain's gone, but they still feel as if they've been rolled over by a steamroller. And, and that can go on for a long time. Mm. So the whole migraine from start to finish can last anything up to five days if you include the prodrome and right through to the end of the postrome, feeling back to normal. And then trouble is sometimes people are very sensitive and they're starting to get the next one mm. before the first one's really gone away. So this is where we sometimes hear that people are getting really long episodes of what seems like one attack. But actually it's probably two or three attacks rolling into each other. Yeah, and definitely not a cluster migraine. <laughs> definitely not, definitely not. We'll talk more about cluster headaches in another podcast, but cluster migraine is a very confusing term we discourage people from using. So, uh, yeah, migraine four phases, a genetic condition, and unfortunately, very common. We're going over to Charlotte and Swatty now. They spoke to some of our patients about their four stages of migraine. Here's what they had to say. Hi, Kara. So um, I, we're basically talking about the four stages of migraine. So what are sort of your stages? How do you feel before, during an attack, and then actually afterwards? What are you, What does it feel like for you? Um, usually uh, just before, so um, for maybe the eight hours before I get an attack, I'll start to feel anxious, mm -hmm. but I won't know why. Yeah. Um, so it's different than other forms of anxiety that I might have. Mm -hmm. So it's sort of a strange feeling of anxiety. Sometimes I get nausea. Okay. Um, and often I'll, I'll wake up in the middle of the night with a headache. So, oh, yes. Yeah. That, a lot of people get that, don't they, in the middle of the night. And Okay. And what about during it? What's it like, sort of? During, it's, um, I, you know, I get the aura but just beforehand. And then during, um, I'm fortunate in that I'm a migraineur who tends to be sleepy. Right. So usually I can sleep through the attack. But um, 
uh, throbbing in the neck. All right. Okay. Um, so my neck is really painful, and usually I'll put an ice pack on it for, to help with that. Um, and then often on my on my the right side of my head okay. mm -hmm, during an attack, and then after an attack. Yeah. Um, I often will feel uh, just like I have a terrible hangover. That's the only thing I can really compare it to. I feel yeah. really spaced out and. It's difficult to do. Do you things. find like lights and things bother you mm -hmm. during? Is it during attack and also after as well? Lights and sounds yeah. and lights smells. And sounds. Yeah, it's almost just it's like of everything. Yeah, just oversensitive to just everything. Yeah, yeah, it's like all your senses are turned up. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Well, it doesn't sound very nice. But... No, it's very unpleasant. <laughs> but it's the National Migraine Center is so wonderful for yeah. um, you know, giving people so much information and doing this podcast looks great. Yeah. yeah. No, that's fantastic. Well, thank you very much for sharing that with us. Sure. Thank you, Charlotte, and thank you, Cara. That was quite insightful. Um, we've been joined by Bernie today, and I will be speaking to her about her four stages of migraine. Hi, Bernie. Thank you for joining us on our podcast. Uh, so today we are talking about the four stages of migraine, yes. um, the first stage being the prodromal stage. Uh, could you tell us a bit about that? Yeah. Um, well, for me, I, I don't really know. Um, for maybe the day before, I do seem to be normal, but just when I get the feeling of a little bit of pain in the side of my head, okay. the the actual migraine seems to come quite quickly after that. Okay. Um, sometimes I feel like my eye is kind of like squinting on squinting one side. On side. Um, and I would say the feeling I get before is not really pain, not just a feeling okay. in my head. Okay. Like it's really hard to describe. Yeah, um, it can be. Yeah. So the, if I knew more about what was making it happen before it happened I think it would be a lot easier. control it better yeah the, so the second phase as they talk about is aura phase not I know I understand that not everybody gets an aura but mm. do you get an aura no I don't think so I think there's been a couple of times where I thought I kind of get a bit of a flash in my eye but I don't know so it could just be it's not just the flashing of the that so that's flashy lights and things. It yeah. could be a tingling in your arms. It could be things yeah. like that, a bit of vertigo. So these are also part yeah. of the aura. Do you get something like no, that? No, not really. I've had a few okay. flashes in the eye before, but not really. Okay. Um, what about the actual attack phase? So what happens yeah. and how does it... Well, I think it comes on quite quickly for me. Um, so it will just be a little bit of pain, then suddenly becomes a lot of pain okay. where I feel like I have to lie down, okay. um, have the lights off, and then can't really do anything for... Are you sensitive to like yeah. lights and smells? Yeah, and not noise. so much smells for me. I know lots of people get sensitive to this stuff, mainly just lights, but only when the pain's quite bad. Okay. I feel like I need to be in the dark. And how long does your attack sort of last usually? Um, it really depends. Um, sometimes the medication seems to work pretty well within an hour or so, and oh, I can okay. sometimes be kind of back to normal, still feeling a bit tired, but okay. um, sometimes. It seems like it doesn't work and it can be a day or more. Wow, um, okay. Yeah, okay. so it depends really. And coming to the final phase of it, so that's like the recovery phase. So mm. when's the attack just, just gone past? Yeah. How does how much time do you take with recovering from the attack? Yeah, I think it depends how bad the attack has been because if it's been sometimes when it kind of seems to go with the first dose of medication, I feel like I feel kind of fine afterwards a bit okay. tired and a bit spaced out but mainly okay but then if it's been a bit of a longer attack sometimes it feels like for the next day or so a bit washed out and tired and yeah out of it <laughs> well thank you so much for sharing your experience no with us thank you thanks thank you for joining us please feel free to ask us any questions you have or any topics you'd like us to discuss in future podcasts our email address can be found in the blurb. Please do subscribe to this podcast and share it with your friends and family. In our next episode, we'll be discussing migraine triggers. So tune in then for more information from Heads Up. You've been listening to the Heads Up podcast. If you want more information or have any comments, email us on info at nationalmigrainecenter.org.uk. Till next time.